Hello, everybody. Welcome back with another episode of the Wild Cabin Podcast. How, how are you all doing today? How are all my listeners doing today? Sorry about the the delay, by the way, in uh, the week. I, I really feel bad about that. It's just a uh, switch uh, became main priority, and uh, I'm doing different types of changes over there so I, I i had a focus on that and then thought i would have a guest host and then unfortunately didn't uh because of uh hours uh time differences but never, nevertheless it is good to fucking be back <laughs> if i'm gonna be honest with you oh my god i i honestly miss doing this uh, and it's definitely more surreal than what I thought, honestly. I thought the podcast would probably be like a one, two-time thing, trying to test the waters out and everything. And uh, lo and behold, uh, it's doing better than I expected. If if I'm going to be honest with you, it's, it's, be, it's doing better than what I expected, and uh, I'm very happy about that. It is literally me just shooting shit on a podcast uh that is different from a video game it's literally my voice uh minus the video game part from twitch and no camera uh i all i i do have a face for radio if i'm gonna be honest with you i'm not saying uh that's bad or anything but i have uh i, I just feel i felt i feel like that i think i'm very attractive but i feel like behind the camera is where I thrive the most, and especially with last episode with MVP, uh, it, it it was a very good episode, and I I hope one day I could top that. Or, uh, like I said, let me know uh, what you guys think on my media, uh, Mr. Joe Wild, if you want MVP to come back. Uh, I know he'd really really appreciate the feedback as well. First time on a podcast for him. And honestly, this is the, my first podcast, and uh, I want to thank uh, all my listeners. I, I really do. Uh, it is very surreal to me that I've probably been doing this for about a month or so, and some sponsors are already reaching out to me, which is uh, weird. <laughs> which is fucking weird. Be like, wow, you like my content? <gasps> uh, uh, I, I've just been doing Twitch for four years. I mean, podcasts. But I think I also have the mentality of I'm not really that hard on myself with the podcast. I feel like I'm more relaxed. I'm more centered, I guess, in a way, because because I'm not focused on that. I think it, it's my back burner project. If it goes somewhere, great. If not, it's just I tried. Boom. Let's move on like another project that I could focus on. I, I want to apologize in advance, by the way because my throat has been killing me. So excuse me while I uh, drink some water. <sighs> That's some nice fucking water. Uh, so honestly, if I'm, I, I, I've caught myself, because I always say, if I'm gonna be honest with you, if I'm honest, uh, I, I, think, I think being, I, I think the topic for today is gonna be hard on yourself. Um, because I've noticed, sincerely, uh, and, and, and I'm going to correlate this with a documentary that I've watched recently. Uh, I have watched uh, The Undertaker, The Last Ride uh, documentary on Peacock. Uh, now, it's on the WWE Network, and it's very weird to me. I, I haven't watched wrestling in a very long time very long time before i get oh wrestling's fake oh fuck you uh first of all it's still real to me damn it uh and second of all it's a script if you know nothing about wrestling uh short short version is two sometimes two people if not more it's like a theater it's a theater for however long that it could go, and it's two people acting. It's it's just two actors trying to make a performance, uh, an entertaining performance for the fans. Uh, 
they it, it sometimes really good sometimes it really sucks depending on the situation but the the documentary is about the undertaker and his road to retirement basically hence the last ride and he said something in the most previous episode that i've watched is if if he's not hard on hard on himself he will never thrive or he would have never thrived to the talent that he's at and my big big problem uh, is he was his own worst enemy i'm my own worst enemy and i've noticed that more and more recently with the slightest minute difficulties or problems that weren't even me and i just ripped my ass a new one like i am so thick-skinned because i'm one of those people you can't like literally you cannot hurt abuse or make me sad because i i'm that person that will make me feel all those things first it's it's a very very hard topic and my biggest problem in life i mean when i was in the military uh i had an injury uh my right knee just blew out uh i'll get to that in a second on what i did in the military and everything uh because i really don't talk about it i I don't talk about it on stream or nothing because i i I feel like it's one of those sensitive tub subjects that you know certain things you you could talk about on stream either people get it or people don't so i don't it's not it's not a conversation starter because i don't really bring it up plus i don't really play those types of video games but uh when my right knee blew out uh on a ruck march and then it blew again again on a boat i they basically told me one you're not mentally stable and two we 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 don't want you anymore um and that's the term where i call myself a dirty penny or a worthless penny uh just because it, it's not that i didn't feel i i felt like a big failure and at that point i put all the blame on me i'm like i fucked up i i i, I fucking suck and it, it's these emotions where I didn't think about it in that present time, but I really thought, Joe, it's your fault. It's, it's your fault that this happened to you. And I mean, probably through eight months after I got home, uh, after, you know, I got honorably discharged and they're, we're just like, we don't fucking want you anymore that they didn't say that, but that's how I felt. Um, because when you're on a path, a curveball could just hit you and you don't know what to do. But those eight months were probably the toughest eight months I had. Uh, because one, I was just critically depressed. Um, probably suicidal as well. Uh, if, if I'm going to be honest with you, I, I was at that point where I'm just like, well, I failed. Uh, I failed myself. I failed the people that looked up to me. I just failed. Uh, so I, I was very vulnerable and not in the right mental state. Um, but prior to that, brought like years before I joined, I had a life threatening injury. Uh, I got hit by a car. If some of you guys don't know, um, unfortunately, like I said, still to this day, my dad and I don't get along. Uh, my father and I, uh, I love him and he loves me but i think as adults we basically said to each other we love you we love each other from a distance he's three thousand miles away and uh it's been very hard it's been very hard not to i've never really had a relationship with him and i look at it you know in my future am i going to be like that you know if 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 down the road i get a partner or anything um you know it's very hard to look back at it and you know you had a parent and you look back and be like when the fuck were were they there but one day senior year uh in jersey 
I moved back to Jersey from Arizona. Uh, I was born in Jersey. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry if I get choked up as well. It's, it's one of those stories where when I tell on stream, I just get like all, oh, I get goosebumps and I, it's, it was a very traumatic day. Uh, so basically one day uh, in September, school started. Probably we're two weeks in at that point, And he's like, you're going to be walking to school. Uh, I walked to school from day one. Uh, a bus couldn't pick me up. And it was, I think, 1.9 miles or almost two. And the strict bus line, because I grew up in a small town, was it wasn't affordable for the get uh, for the buses to pick somebody up that's not like 2.5 miles away. It, it was stupid because I was just right on the border. Um, so my dad left for, for work and I had to walk, uh, to school. And then one day I was walking a crosswalk and unfortunately I got hit by a car. Uh, I got hit by a car by a 67 year old gentleman, uh, who was texting and driving and I got hit and the car hit me. And I basically flew about 100 feet. With that being said, with the force and my body, I had all contusions on my left-hand side, just hitting the gravel all the way to my shoulders, down my left leg. Uh, and I had stage 3 burst liver, and I was bleeding out. And I was pronounced dead for four minutes until uh, I was revived in the ambulance. Now... What I'm about to say next is you're either a believer or you're a doubter. This is what I saw. I know what I saw. Uh, I don't want your any. I, I like it, people are going to think of it weird because it's just like, oh, you were, you just saw the light in the ambulance. No, I know what I saw. Uh, and this is the goosebump part. I fought. I saw my guardian angel and that's that's my grandfather. Pop pop. Uh, I call him. And said he hugged me uh i saw the pearly gates i saw the clouds saw the gold uh gold gates he was outside of it and he hugged me and he said it's not your time and he just pushed me out off the cloud and my soul or whatever outer body experience just landed right in my body and i woke up um and i'll never forget that day until i die and it's very very hard um you know when i see the video on what happened or whatever the the greatest thing that i saw was when i got hit and when i was knocked unconscious my body stood up took about five five steps and i muttered something and I saw my lips move. And I, I, I'm pretty sure it was like, I got to get to school or something. Like something similar like that. And then all of a sudden, my eyes are like shut in the video. And all of a sudden, my knees buckle. And I just fall right to the floor. Fall right to the fucking floor. And I, I will never forget that day. I, I will never forget that day. But that shows in my mind truly wholeheartedly i will never ever give up i i have that mentality in my mind that i just don't fucking give up and with being so hard on myself st still then as a free adult till now is I believe wholeheartedly if I don't push myself to the limit that I I have to be or have to, I I got to be the best I don't know who else would be there you know I I'm very proud and I'm not very proud about everything I've done you know I'm I, I think I'm a fucking loser in a lot of ways I think I'm pathetic uh, but the one thing that ultimately I could say is I never give up with anything I do. Uh, you know, I like I said, with blaming myself from the injury, it, it 
it wasn't my fault because what happened is I had that precondition injury before I joined the military and they cleared me. We were at a time in Arizona where they they were accepting everybody and I didn't know that at that time. You know, I did my ASVAB, I did the scores in high school. I did everything that I had to do, but years later after the fact, uh several doctors uh a few lawyers basically were like they should have never accepted you they should have never accepted you and i'm like why uh like why did they and i never got an answer and it's it's crazy on i i don't blame them for accepting me that's not the kind of person i am uh but i look at it at like this now especially through that time i blame myself but now when i look at the past is it's not right for me to blame myself at that it's i i don't i'm not that type of person to look on the past or the future i mean i used to plan everything out everything out fucking from days among weeks till months i remember when i was fucking having a calendar and i'm like this this is when i'm going to ask this girl out this is where i'm gonna hold their hand and boop 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 like simple shit like that where ever since the car accident i couldn't plan an anything ahead I, I i just can't uh it's very hard for me to look ahead with certain things like with work and twitch streaming that's a little different in my mind uh but everything else i just can't fucking plan ahead and and it's been a real crux it's been a real crux to get over you know i i still have i still don't like to drive um because at that point here, here's the fucking kicker every time i tell the story i get more and more people saying I hate your dad. Like I, I've gotten that, and this isn't a rig on him. God forbid, you know he doesn't he doesn't watch my shit anyway or listen to this. But um, what happened was I was seventeen on the verge of eighteen, senior in high school, when I got hit by the car. Now keep this in mind, okay when you're listening to this and just close your eyes imagining me or imagine yourself in a hospital bed just imagine that hooked up to the machines and everything you know the he he's there uh i'm laying like breathing with the hooked up to the bed and the doctor comes in and he's like uh right right in front of me and my dad he's just like i we don't know if your son's gonna make it you know that's the first time i ever saw my dad cry like holy fucking shit you know that that's where i'm just like wow like that was my like oh fuck moment and now here's the kicker when the doctor said that i looked at i looked my dad right in the eye and and he and i said i i'm i'm gonna be fine uh you know i i'm i'm gonna get through this and then he rebuttaled how do you know i'm like oh fuck i i am that person where and, and 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 people need to understand this as well there are i feel like there are certain breeds out there of people that know how to do this i'm one of these people where if something's wrong with me and my body i know before any doctors tell me to it's not like you're sick or cold but it's it, it it it's it's more than that. It's like a feeling like I could get through this or whatever. Uh, but then, okay, now flash flash forward two days. So I'm still in the hospital at this point. I'm still recovering, and he goes up to me and he said, "You're gonna go get your license," and I'm still healing at this point. <laughs> and he said you're gonna go get your license first of all i think he was planning on the lawyer check 
and everything but i i was at that point where i'm like i don't want to fucking drive absolutely fucking not i was not in the mental stability at that point to mentally give a fuck about anything about uh, un unless it's recovering that was my main focus because if i didn't if i didn't heal you know properly and take the necessary time to heal i would have been fucked and i don't want to panic over a vehicle that i just got hit with it, it, it doesn't matter and when i tell people this you know i still have the rational fear of you know getting into a car accident or driving for that matter they're like just get over it it's it's that simple it's not that simple it, it it's it, it it is not that fucking simple uh for those people who say that it, it's one of those things if you haven't experienced it i don't give a fuck you know keep, keep it to yourself because mentally i don't give a fuck uh it's it's something traumatic and if you haven't felt anything traumatic good for you bless your sweetheart the world hasn't fucked you yet the world will fuck you and then you'll be like oh i get what he's saying now i i get i get it but uh yeah right when i'm still healing in the hospital uh he's like you're gonna go get your license and i think that was his way of just saying oh hey i fucked up but hey you know let, we're gonna get your license oh man that, that that was another journey but um yeah it, it was not uh it was not a fun experience uh i think mentally i first of all i wasn't ready you know, I want to give a special shout outs to the teachers and the TAs at my senior high school um, for realizing my problems. Uh, because keep in mind, when I got back to school, I still had to walk home as well. It wasn't just the walk there. It was uh, walking home as well. And it was such a big thing where I'm just like, great. Um and then weeks later the fact after i healed and went back to school uh i was forced to drive to school uh and, and granted you may say to yourself you know that hey at least you're driving it's faster than walking yeah but when when you're behind that wheel after a after an accident and you're still healing it's it's not good it, it's not mentally good for me um but yeah that 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 was me uh now here's the kicker it got worse when i had to take my test uh because i i i was very nervous i'm, I'm very very nervous one when i take tests and even if I know everything, I'm just like, <laughs> uh, so I'm stupid, basically. I, I'm stupid under pressure. Uh, and I had to take the written part of the test 12 times, if not 13. Uh, and how it works in New Jersey when I, ha when I got my license is you have to wait a week, study, and then... Uh, take the test again you're then like you just can't take it back to back and i'm like well fuck so at that point he's getting pissed off because i'm like i'm studying uh this book uh and i'm just not retaining any information and the o the only questions that i got wrong were the alcohol questions and I have never taken a sip of alcohol. I have never smoked uh, nothing. And I'm just like, there are so many alcohol questions. And I feel like a dumb fuck because how am I supposed to know 0 0.8 or whatever the number is, is the legal substance. But I I'm like, how the fuck? what what like what like i get it but for me i'm just like i'm that one percent i don't fucking drink i i'm i'm not gonna do that 
but uh it, it was crazy and then when i pass that literally i take the i take the driving and uh i pass the second time the only reason why i failed the first time because i got an old geezer and i, I he marked me down he failed me because he's like do a three-point turn and i couldn't hear him and i'm like do a what and he just he, he he just stopped the vehicle and he said get out and i'm like oh fuck jesus but um it, it was a crazy ride <sighs> sorry about that i had to take a sip of water but i mean i guess the moral of the story is never give up you don't know what life is going to throw at you and that's the problem that is the problem with me especially with twitch now where i'm sort of in that phase of it's picking up but so is work um outside of this where i've been getting more and more job applica uh not job applications but interviews uh through weeks to come and it is just going to be a juggling process where what is the main focus you know down the road the main focus could be the podcast um but currently right now it is twitch and i'm sort of okay with that um but that is for right now actually until later on where things just happen and some things may fall through uh via giving up and being my worst critic i definitely think i improved from when i first started absolutely and without that that sternness that anger that i have deep down inside where if people see that and people have seen it on camera where i i just call myself a fucking idiot over the smallest minute things and it has like it it's inconsequential it eats me up it eats me up because i'm like you should fucking know this shit you should know that and half the time it's obs fucking up um obs steam labs which is my software and sometimes it's just dog shit and i have no control over it whatsoever and i'm just like well it's my fault even in reality it's like no joe it's an audio glitch from steam labs it won't open up or something and i just lose my temper and i tell everybody it's not anger it's the passion that i have because if i think i am the best god damn it i will work better than everybody else i'm here day in and day out no matter what the fuck you do if you don't think you're the best get the fuck out and that's honestly how i feel i want to do something that's entertaining and pleasing to the people and when i'm here every fucking day it eats me up because the worst feeling that i could ever feel is feeling like a failure that is my biggest fucking emotion not happiness no 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 if i get happy you better be thinking i hit the lottery or i found a rare spiral item or something just happened because it's very very rarely i hate to say it that i'm happy uh and there's nothing wrong with that it's either i have a really really high standard or i'm just not that type of person that gets ha happy that all the time it is what it is now that also goes to the standpoint of sadness i rarely get sad and when i do it, it, it's i i tell people look i i'm not mentally ready i'll, I'll message you when i can and i'm at the uh, like i was at that point months ago where i had to tell people like hey I, i'm i'm taking a break I, i'll be back i don't know when but i will and i was literally gone for a whole week never before uh and i hope never again at this point but it's not like i burnt myself out it's just i just felt like a failure and it's when the doors close where i'm that type of person where i i love people to death i i really do but it's my problems let me deal with my problems i don't want you getting sucked with my bullshit 
and asking how I feel because I'm going to tell you, look, I'm fucked up in the head or I'm sad and I don't want you to see that side of me. And I say it out of respect. And I don't think a lot of people get that. Uh, but I, I'm that person where I'll love you to the day I die. But if you're in my circle and you're in my hole or whatever, the or, or you're you're fucking out there on the battlefield with me. It, it it goes a long way uh because you know i love you but it, it's how i deal with my problems and it's out of courtesy like i said um i i i know some people can't really explain it but how i explain it is i love you enough for you not to get sucked in my bullshit and you know it, if you really think about it a lot of people have said if they're if they're close to you and you call them family and you love them you need to tell them about your problems and hopefully they could fix it uh, or help you fix it but unfortunately mentally stability stability i i can't say that i i i'm one of those people where i will say i love you and mean it from the bottom of my heart for example but with problems if you're not here with me or you're not face to face it means nothing unfortunately and it, it's fucked up to say a little bit and i get that but i'm so used to a one-way street uh i i'm not i don't have the repercussions uh where I've always been known, hey, it's a one-way street. I love you, accept it. I don't I I don't deserve your love and I just push their love away uh up until, you know, probably a year or so ago where it's just like, no. Love love isn't like that. You 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 could give as much as you want, but I'm so used to people not giving it back. It's it, it's very rare where I'm like, "Oh, fuck." So the, oh you're giving me care back and I'm just like oh oh I I I don't I I don't know what to do here but it, it's very rare um but I I'm not I'm that person where I won't believe you in uh if you say you love me or in a way or whatever till it's said to my until it's face to face it's just one of those things where since I've been doing streaming for so long and I've been in front of a camera and I've talked uh, my whole adult life where everything I say or do, I do it. No ifs, ands, or buts. You beat me in a bet, I'll, I'll do the bet, absolutely. I keep my word. Uh, but it sort of goes, it's not that I don't believe you because I love, I, I, love, I love you, you know, if I say I love you, it's point blank, you're... you're 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 in the family now you're in my circle uh but when it said i love you back or whatever i just can't accept it uh and i i don't want them to because i've always felt like i gotta earn respect i gotta earn love no matter what even if you say hey joe you got my love and respect mentally i think oh it's just for that second i gotta i gotta one-up myself or i gotta outdo myself in some way shape and form via if you love me via the stream as a friend what whatever the factor may be i want to reach a higher level no matter what i do what i do and if i don't top myself mentally i'm i'm gonna feel like somebody's out gonna do me and the only person that's gonna outdo me is myself and i take that with pride it's it's the chip on my shoulder like I said before, if if you don't want to be the best, get the fuck out. Uh, and it, it 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 definitely it leads to a weird way most of the time, but it's weird when you're on camera because people have seen me just beat the shit out of me, just beat like mentally abuse myself, and it's not good. I I'm, I never said it was, but it's a motivator. It, it, it's it's my motivator. It's my own way of kicking myself in the ass and not making the mistakes in the future. Uh, 
and I've grown. I, I've literally grown where I've literally had tantrums years ago on camera uh, to like literally like punching my leg or like punching my chest or punching my head. And it's just like, ah, oh, you fucking idiot. And, you know, occasionally, unfortunately, that still happens once in a while. But I have toned it down, not realizing that I've toned the anger down a lot. And I'm not saying it's right. Uh, I, I just think mentally stability is just like how I get things through. Um, because unfortunately, I was hit growing up. And if, if I didn't do something right, I knew I knew where I fucked up and I never did it again. And I think as an adult, that's what happened and the self abuse happened. And uh, it, it's just a mixture of emotions where I would rather hurt myself than anybody else. But the question is why you got to hurt yourself. Like, that's it. That's it. You know, I, I speak in a way of, I don't curse to curse. I, I think cursing, unfortunately, has gotten a bad rap where if you curse, you're a bad person. Where it's not the meaning behind it anymore. It's not the passion. And as much as that makes doesn't make sense, I'll sort of explain it to you in my in my point of view, where you could say fuck all you want and it means nothing. It, it means nothing. It's like what? Huh? Fuck. You know, it's one of those words that has different meanings. But if I say go fuck yourself, that has so negative connotations instead of ah oh, fuck I forgot my keys. You know, it's like a dough moment from The Simpsons. But it, 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 I never curse in a negative attitude towards anybody. If I do, it's toward myself. And it's probably calling myself a fucking idiot. And it has the negative connotations where I'm like, I understand completely. I should not call myself a fucking idiot because I'm not. But I've done it all my life. I, I, I've, I, it's a very bad habit. Uh, and like I said, it's my biggest bad habit where it's just like, you could be hard on yourself and be like, slap yourself on the wrist, be like, stop it stop it bad bad like but there are certain people like myself where i just take it way too far and i don't realize it because i'm just like oh shit you know you fucking idiot you know you should have saw that you should have done this and it goes to the it goes to the problem where if you're so hard on yourself you just can't let people in and it's a two-way street you know if if i can't be happy or if i don't see happiness in my work and i never give up it goes to the point where if you never give up and you try 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 it, and it's ultimately a failure that's called insanity because you're doing something same and you're expecting a different result Hence the insanity where I just lose everything. I lose every ounce of confidence and happiness and joy. And I just lose it all, unfortunately. And, um, you know, like I've said that, where I've always said, no matter what you do, you could, as long as you try for a certain amount of time and it doesn't work for you, just give it up. There's nothing wrong with give up. There's not. But for me, I'm sort of weird in the way of I'll never give up out of spite or stubbornness. And that is such a bad attitude to have where it's not even about me. Where it's just like when I put my mind to something, I'll do it uh, uh, like I, I will. I will do it um, no matter how long it takes. And unfortunately, sometimes you fail and sometimes you succeed. But if you don't have that motivation to do it, then you should just give up and move on to something else. And my problem is I have motivation uh, and I like what I do. It's just 
not succeeding unfortunately and that's fine i'll eventually get there i'm not gonna be like the boohoo scenario where i throw in the towel after a fucking shitty shitty stream or a shitty day and i'm just like nah, i'm done here no it's uh so i'm gonna do it and when i do it i'll look back at these moments and i'll be like wow i went through a fucking lot no help whatsoever started from zero now i'm here and i'm like i said i'm very happy where i'm at uh but it's the craving on i want to be the best i want to be a top 10 person i want to be number five i want to be number one and that's what motivates me if i'm not there if i eventually if i don't get there and i and i don't have the passion for it in some way st uh, shape or form i gotta do it for me uh and that's that's the problem with goals in my opinion where when you build when when you bring other people's in your hopes and dreams and aspirations you're not really doing it for you anymore you're doing it for uh, for others and they're your dreams they're your aspirations you got to look yourself fucking right in the mirror and say what the fuck do you want and if what you want is not what they want too bad you do you follow your heart you follow your mind and you fucking do it no ifs ands or buts nothing should be holding you holding you back nothing no gimmick no facade you be your true self you get your fucking dreams and you put your life back on track and unfortunately it's not that easy sometimes sometimes you just have to wait a really long time until you get that one lucky break and once you get that one lucky break you're off to the fucking races but the the matter of the time is how long do you wait and that's it that's it how do you, how long do you wait until you give up but I would love to know what your hopes and dreams are. Uh, truly, I do. What do you want to accomplish? What are your goals? And uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that because I realize we've been going for about 45 minutes now. And uh, what's going to happen is when this goes live, I will be doing a podcast next week as well to make up for the missing podcast uh i'm planning to pump these out every other week or so but uh hopefully with special guests or everything and uh, like i said if you want to be featured on the podcast or uh get to know me on my twitch side or youtube side it is twitch.tv slash mr joe wild instagram mr joe wild twitter mr joe wild as well and then of course youtube mr joe wild uh, please don't forget to listen to these on Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts and uh, tell people you want more of me. Tell people you want more of me. And uh, if you have a comment for the next week's topic, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to fucking hear your comment uh, or, and your topic. And I'm one of those people where I respond to every comment I get via no matter what video and I'd love to hear your feedback but that is all for right now this has been the wild cabin podcast don't forget the e at the end and as always i hope you're happy because you made me happy don't forget to uh follow and subscribe uh whenever you can take care and i love you all and keep on smiling Bye bye <laughs>